Hey guys, how's it going? Ricky here from Most Valuable Podcast. I'm joined as I always am with Brandon Swanee Swanson, who is a firm believer in the Clinton for Prison campaign. <laughs> you are Clinton for Prison. Yes, we can. Let's do it or whatever she says. But we're here to give you our week four picks for college football. How it works, we pick five games, usually top 25 games or games including top 25 teams. We give you our picks. The MVP guys, they have theirs down below in the description on mostvaluablepodcast.com. Then you give us yours down below in the description. You ready to get into these, Brandon? I certainly am. Let's start with the first one. Wait, in before, SEC. before though, before okay. though we okay. get into them, what are you? You're ten and five. I'm ten and five. I believe you're eight and seven. I, I know. With Mark. I know. I'm eight and seven. Yeah, and you and that Mark pisses me off because <laughs> you, you don't know what you're doing it's, when you pick these teams. It's, so. The standings are: I'm ten and five with Mike Rankin. Um, you're eight and seven with Mark Weber. Sean Anderson is six and nine. Dave Oster's in the rear, five and ten. So this week. I can gain some more ground, hopefully, on some more people. As I went five and zero last week, gotta throw that. Out. Thank you for reminding me, because I gotta throw that out there that I went five and zero in my picks. But let's get to the first one: Georgia, Old Miss. Who you got? In this one, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a good game. But Jacob Eason, the true freshman quarterback for Georgia, I think it's gonna be pressured by Ole Miss. And I think that there's going to be a couple of turnovers. Ole Miss, Chad Kelly, what we have not seen from Georgia is a pass rush in these games in the first three weeks. I think that Chad Kelly is able to sit back there and lob them all day along. He had over 400 yards, three touchdowns against Alabama. Look for much of the same this week. I'm going Ole Miss. This is going to be – this was a hard game for me only because Ole Miss is a good team, but – Georgia can also be a good team on any given Saturday. I think Nick Chubb's going to get it going. I think that this Georgia team is better than they might have shown in the past two games that they've played. I'm going to go with Georgia in this one to win by, it's going to be close, they'll win by a field goal, but they will get the win at Old Miss, and Old Miss will drop to three losses on the season. How about our next one, Big Ten matchup. I said it on the primetime podcast, Brandon. Not a chance, not a chance. The Badgers from Wisconsin, from Madison, go into East Lansing and defeat Sparty. Go green, go white. Who you got, Brandon? Well, Ricky, in this one, Wisconsin is, is, is are they really any good? Right now, I think they're ranked number 11. But this team really, they, they beat an LSU team in, in week one that really we're not even sure if they're a good LSU team. And then they... Almost lose to Georgia State, which I think we're pretty much all on the same page that Georgia State is not that good. R.J. Hunter went there. I, I think that right now Wisconsin, they're kind of that team where I'm still wondering, like, what what type of team are they? Are they going to be a good team or are they not going to be a good team? Uh, I, I think that they're going to have their first big test this week, Michigan State. I can't say that they handled Notre Dame because they did let Notre Dame back into that ball game at the end. But, but Michigan Notre Dame's State, got Deshaun Kaiser. Michigan State is going to win this one over Wisconsin. What about? And this is one where I went back and forth on. I went back and forth. We've got Florida, Tennessee, and here's why I went back and forth. Florida, Jack Del or Jack Del Rio's son. Jack Del, Del Rio is not playing. In the little game. Little Del Rio, as I call him. He's not playing. He's going to be out, I believe it's, what, two to three weeks with his injury? Yeah. Appleby is your quarterback, and he played for Purdue, which mm -mm, those guys are not good. So I, I automatically are worried there. But then Tennessee, I look at them and go, should have lost to Appalachian State. You barely beat Ohio. You were losing to Virginia Tech, which is your best opponent all season. I think this team kind of to take what Cowherd said about Iowa this week, Tennessee is going to get carded in the SEC sooner rather than later. Florida is going to do it with a backup quarterback, even though I'm not 100% confident in this pick. Florida's been pretty good so far this season. I think they're kind of leaning on, on a defense that is pretty good in the SEC. Tennessee is 3 and 0 but they've had a case each each week they've had a case of the whoopsies. They've dropped the ball, they fumbled the ball. Last week against Ohio they fumbled the ball 5 times, did not lose one. They do that this week, they're losing at least one. Florida with the win. 
What about the next one, an SEC matchup yet again? Because we've got a bunch of those this week, the Razorbacks and the Aggies. Texas A&M, I think, is looking really good this year. I think they're looking really good. I think that uh, on the Primetime Podcast, we talked about how mm-hmm. we were actually are very surprised that Kevin Selman has been able to get hold of this program after some of the offseason uh, drama and, and some things that didn't go so swell for the Aggies at Texas A&M, but he really has gotten a firm hold on this team. The guys have bought in, and, and this was a kind of a make-or-break season for Kevin Sumlin. And right now, Arkansas... They're a good team. They're an up-and-coming team. I just think that Texas A&M right now is on a train, and uh, that train is still chugging right along. I think Texas A&M gets the win. Yeah, I I almost wanted to pick the Razorbacks, but Texas A&M, they've impressed me this year. I think they get the win, especially at home. And then our last one, Stanford, the Cardinal, going on the road to play UCLA. The Bruins and Josh Rosen. I think you got to pick the Stanford McCaffreys in this one. It's, you made the joke as you were telling me your picks today. You got to go with the McCaffreys because why not? I think the question is, is is UCLA going to be able to defend against Christian McCaffrey? And it's it's coming out of the backfield to catch a pass. It's getting a handoff in the backfield to you know run right up the middle. I mean, he's shifty and he's quick and he's really, really good. And he's uh, in Heisman a lot of people candidate. in a lot of people's minds should have been the Heisman Award winner last year. You're all wrong if you think that. But I think well, of course that it's going for, to Lamar Action Jackson. For I'm saying last year. I'm, no, you're I'm wrong. saying this year. I'm saying you're wrong if you thought he should have won it last year. I'm saying you're wrong if you think this year. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I, I know. I, I know. What, what, I know what you were talking just about. Just throwing it out. But there. I don't think you were picking up what I was putting down. <laughs> I, I wasn't picking up what you were throwing down. But thank you. No. Thank you for helping me pick up and put the together the pieces. <laughs> like a Lego set. Yeah, like Legos. You play like, Legos. Like the like the big Legos though, because I'm not I'm not old enough to play with the little Legos yet. I gotta play with those big Legos. You're nope, not old nope. enough now to play with the little Legos? No, choking hazard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Ricky is only two and a half years old. so I eat a lot. Yeah, I like to eat. <laughs> I don't know how that goes anywhere. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to just get rid of get this done and over with. Stanford, I'm picking Stanford. The McCaffrey's with the win here. And and and, and folks, that, that, that's going to probably about do it. Right? That is going to do it. So this is where you guys come in. Let us know who you got down below in the comment section. Also, go to mostvaluablepodcast.com. Actually, you don't even have to click up there and type it in. <laughs> you can just click the link down in the description. We did all the work for you. Gave you the link to the direct page. I want to thank you guys for checking out this video. Go follow us on Twitter. Those are down in the descriptions as well. For Brandon and myself, we will see you in the next video. And remember, folks, don't choke on your Legos. Yeah, Sean's going to be mad I took his catchphrase.